pollution has been in the news quite a lot recently. Most people assume that the quality of the air they breathe in London is the same, no matter what they're doing or where they are. What we wanted to show was some measurements to demonstrate that this is not the case. Sometimes I get a running nose and running eyes, but I don't know what causes it. I'm always cycling. When I'm on the main road in the morning coming to work, I'm astonished at how the traffic is so locked. It's getting so much worse. And I'm quite astonished that it can be so bad that, that you say it's actually the cause of death in quite a few thousand cases. So we all met up in central London during afternoon rush hour. One person travelled from A to B on the bus. One person travelled the same route in a car. Another person travelled by foot, walked from A to B. And finally, someone travelled on a bicycle in the same route. We compared these different forms of transport with two other routes in quieter routes away from the busy road down some back streets. I live really close to a main road and sometimes I worry about the air I'm breathing in from all the traffic that goes past. Well, I drive occasionally when I have to, but I also try and use public transport and cycle to work to actually help reduce air pollution problems. I'd like to be walking a lot more to, to and from work um, and I've done it a couple of times but I just find that the air is too heavy for me and being an asthmatic I uh, I do find it difficult, so I end up just taking the bus or, or, or the tube. I live near the, quite near the junction of the A10, Hackney Road and Kingsland Road, and that's the way that I cycle regularly to work, so I'm concerned about air pollution. I just think we're people becoming more aware of air pollution now and the damaging things that it does, particularly if, like me, you're a cyclist and you know, you're taking exercise so you're breathing deeply. Um, I'm just concerned about what the long-term health implications are. Uh, the main way I reduce my exposure to air pollution is by avoiding busy routes when I'm cycling. I never run down busy roads um, and if the pavement's really wide I try to just keep away from the cars because I've heard it's actually better even that small distance makes a difference. Whenever I come to London my main mode of transport is I take buses and while I'm in the city I don't take buses, I usually walk so that usually reduces my contribution to air pollution or carbon emissions. What stood out was that the two people travelling inside the vehicles were exposed to even higher levels of pollution. The car driver was by a very long way exposed to the highest levels of pollution, even though their journey was relatively short. What happened was that the fumes from the vehicles in front and behind were coming into the car and getting trapped there and not being able to disperse. The person on the bus was higher than the, the cyclist, perhaps surprisingly. So it's not true that you can escape this pollution by sitting inside a vehicle. The cyclist, interestingly, was not only the quickest to complete their journey, but they were also exposed to much lower pollution levels than the people in the car, as the pollution around them was able to disperse as they cycled along the road. Despite taking the longest to complete the journey, the person walking was still exposed to around half the pollution of the person in the car. That's the total pollution over their whole journey. Perhaps not surprisingly, we found that those on the quieter routes were exposed to lower levels of air pollution on average than those on the busier routes with heavier traffic. In London, just like any other city, you're going to be exposed to air pollution from vehicles. However, this experiment has shown that there are things that you can do. You can choose your route carefully and you can reduce your exposure. So in summary, our results have shown that travelling inside a vehicle does not protect you from air pollution. In fact, quite the reverse. By walking and cycling, you'll not only create less air pollution yourself, but you can reduce your exposure to air pollution. You can go a step further by taking quieter routes away from this traffic. But avoiding air pollution is not a sustainable solution. This is a very important point. We need to take more action by government to reduce the amount of air pollution in the cities, at the same time lowering our risk by avoiding this air pollution when we can. We can avoid a certain amount of pollution if we consider our 
habits of getting from one place to another. And we're talking about thousands to do with um, the London air pollution and the air pollution of the country generally. And that's terrible. The next hope is that people generally try to change their habits and that they put pressure on governments to change their habits as well. If governments don't get engaged in what's good for people, it's good for the planet. If they don't get engaged in that, we don't have any chance. We definitely have the right to try to survive and not be killed by air pollution. We've got to think of how the world could be different.